Hello, in this five in five video, I'm going to take you through the five steps that were used to create a graphic for a laptop skin, which we used in one of our 30 second application videos. I'm going to take you through those steps next in Adobe Illustrator. Here's the final graphic, which we're going to show you how we produced. As we said, this was used for a laptop skin in one of our 30 second application videos in which we printed this on a VG2 and applied it to the laptop cover. So the first stage in producing this graphic was actually to start by creating a sketch of what we wanted to create. So this was a hand drawn sketch, which we then photographed and then brought in the photograph into Illustrator to use this as our template to create our vector outlines. So stage one was just creating a sketch. Stage two was then to use this sketch to create the vector based outlines. Now, as you can see, the background is actually quite sort of prominent, so it's hard to see some of these vector lines. A tip when using this is to select the item or the layer that you're using, go to the layers panel into the three little lines drop down and select template. As you can see, this now makes the background a lighter color, so it's easier to see what you're working on, locks the layer and shows you that it's a template layer. This is handy when you're using sketches or scans as a template. So what we did was use the pen tool to draw around all of these individual letters. So we were just, as you can see here, using the pen tool to slowly draw around each of the individual shapes, making sure that every single part was created as a shape, because obviously this looks 3D, but is not actually 3D. If we move away the drawing in the background, we can now see all the individual lines, hair lines of this design. It looks a little bit more, uh, uh, or makes a bit more sense when we actually turn on the fill. So as you can see here, we've turned on the fill on all of these shapes to make these have a white fill, which means we can see the final design starting to come to shape. The next part of this process was to add the color for this design. So we changed the shape so that's part of this lettering was actually on top of the bottom set of lettering and all of these shapes now, which were just hairline shapes before, have been filled using the gradient tool. So if we bring out the gradient window here, you'll be able to see that we used a range of different blends and gradients for each of these shapes from a palette that was custom created. So we've got a bluish palette, a dark reddish palette, and then an orangey red palette, which we use to fill these different shapes. You can see the gradients by pressing G on your keyboard. And you can see here, we've created the gradients at different angles, depending on where, the, uh, how, how it suited the shape best. So this was creating all of the fills on all of these shapes using the gradient tool. The next step after creating all of these shapes was to add a bit more depth. And we did that by using shading. So if we jump onto the fourth stage, as we can see here, there's a drop shadow in the background. So this was created by merging all of the shapes together to create a single shape, adding a black fill with a transparency or an opacity uh, that was very low. So in this case, 17%. That meant that this could just sit behind the graphic and look like a drop shadow. In the letters, we also created shadows as well. So as you can see here, for example, there's a shape that's behind this orangey shape. And again, this has got an, uh, a darken effect in the transparency window and an opacity of 40%. This gives the effect of this orange line being on top of the other lines. We can see another one here, for example. There were also some other transparencies added on top of some of these existing shapes, just to add a little bit more depth. For example, here, if I pull this shape out, you can see that there's just a small darkening patch here that was used to give a drop shadow underneath this shape. So we went around adding depth to each of these parts to make the 3D really pop on these letters. And then the final design, we just turn these on layer by layer, we can see a background, a fill for the background, the shadow that we had before, all of the sh letters with all of their sh shading added, and then a small outline put on everything at the end. 
And then this was what we used to print on the VG2640.